Thank you very much, Chairman. I want to uh, say how much I uh, was inspired by the movie, and I'm delighted that all of you and the others uh, who are in the uh, other rooms are uh, participating in what I think is a wonderful evening. Um, I want to ask each member of the panel to uh, say a few words about uh, what the uh, movie and what their experience and their journey means in the context of expanding opportunity. I tried to think, what is it that we could say that would capture the, uh, the meaning of this uh, movie and, and of our experience here? And what uh, jumped in my mind was the uh, idea that um, talent seeks expression. Uh, all of the uh, individuals uh, at Carl Hayden High that we got to see uh, both in their time as students there and in the years since, all of them sought to uh, have in a very joyous and a very active way an expression of their talent. Now, we have to take responsibility uh, for whether that talent was fully realized and whether that talent was fully allowed to grow. And of course, we saw that it was not. Uh, but I do think that we have a very good uh, opportunity to turn what has been a disappointment and even a tragedy in terms of the lack of uh, engagement with expanding opportunity into something different. Uh, two million is a big number. Uh, two million is a big number. And the fact that so much of that talent is not fully engaged and fully allowed to express itself uh, is something that we should aim to change. So I'm going to ask, uh, starting with uh, Anna on my left, ask our members uh, of the panel to say a word that would allow them to express their view. Uh, and then we're going to have a conversation because I'm sure among all of you here, there are ideas that are uh, just really uh, need to be expressed. So Phil's actually my advisor, so he knows my first name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my middle name is when I go by, Sophia. So I'm Sophia Campos. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, so I just want to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Sophia. I was born in Peru, raised in Los Angeles since I was six. Um, and I found out that I was undocumented when I was 17. Um, and then I began getting involved uh, after I joined Ideas at UCLA, which is a support group on campus, much like Dream It now is here. Um, and I wanted to do a shout out to Dream It members and also make sure that y'all know where they are and who they are. And so whoever is comfortable standing up with y'all could just stand up and wave or say hi. <laughs> I'm Ruben. I come from uh, San Luis de Paso, Guanajuato, Mexico. I'm planning uh, to major in mechanical engineering and physics. Uh, hi guys, I'm Marco. I come from uh, Mexico City, Mexico, and currently right now I'm a software and mechanical engineer. Uh, hi, my name is Jose. I was born in Bolivia, raised in Miami, and um, I'm planning to study mathematics. Hi, my name is Paulo. Um, I was born in Ecuador. I uh, lived in Tampa, and I'm course 16. Thank you. Um, well, it's been amazing to get to know these guys. Um, this is most of Dream It, right? It's very new. It's just starting to come alive, and I'm the only girl in it. So we hope that more women will join in the future, more documented immigrant women. Um, and it's been amazing, I think, to work with 18, 19 year old guys. And, and this is the first time that they're coming out as undocumented. I just want to also acknowledge how real and how vulnerable that is. It means a lot, not just, I think, to me and to us, but also to our families, right? Um, so I'm here because I'm honoring the sacrifices that my family has made. And you know, you're right, two million is a tragedy, but there's 12 million undocumented people in this country, and my parents are part of, of that story just as much as I am, and just as much as my brother and my sister are too. Um, and so even though I have deferred action, which grants the safety from deportation and legal work permits, I still live in fear that my parents will be deported any day, right? I still live in fear that also when my DACA expires, what's gonna happen then, right? 
Um, I graduate next year for my, or I'm sorry, this year, uh, this academic year in May for my master's in urban planning. Um, and I have become empowered through the immigrant youth movement. I have been able to find my own voice and find my power, find my story, and be able to tell it in a strong and powerful way um, because of my undocumented status and the reality and the truth that my peers showed me rather than what the media showed me, right? My parents chose to keep our undocumented status a secret because of what society told us. Um, undocumented meant, illegal meant, alien meant, right? All of that shame, all of that fear, all of that stigma is created by a society, created by a system, um, like the guy in the video said, that is, is crazy, um, and that is illogical, and that is inhumane also. Um, and so our, our group Dream It, our immigrant youth movement, um, shows us otherwise, and proves to us, not just in mind, in education, but also in heart, in storytelling, um, that there is a better way and that we can work to create that change possible. So we want to create action through our immigrant youth organizing. I also want to do a shout out to STEM members. I know Kathy's here and Gladys is here and other amazing organizers. And that's the local immigrant youth group that I'm not going to talk more about. But it was a total national undocumented youth-led movement that wanted deferred action. Um, and it's a small step in something much greater that we're trying to achieve. So it's not a complete tragedy. It's, it actually has a lot of heart in it, a lot of love, and a lot of hope. Um, well, my name is Jose Gomez. I am currently a sophomore here at MIT. I am a Core 16 major, which means aerospace engineering for anybody not aware of the numbers. <laughs> I come from Nuevo Leon, Mexico, which is one of the northern states of Mexico. But I, I'm from McAllen, Texas. At least that's the first answer I give because that's where I was. Well, that's where I spent most of my life. That's where I grew up. That's the place I call home. Um, and this is the first time that I come out uh, as openly undocumented, publicly undocumented, because after I reached MIT at least, I was able, it, it gave me a greater voice to speak out. And it felt somewhat necessary, being that I was, I got the privilege of getting here, and I saw not that many people in my uh, situation get, uh, fulfill what they want to do, uh, go to the university they want to go to, two million is a tragedy, and because I was able to make it to where um, I, was, I wanted to go, I wanted to make sure that I speak out for the rest of those two million people. And so that's that's why we formed Dream It, that's, that's why we're here today. Hi everyone, um, I'm Hanata Teldado. Uh, I am the lead coordinator of the student immigrant movement. Um, I'm also a part-time UMass Boston student. Um, and I'm uh, also documented or undocumented. I don't know what to call myself anymore. Um, <clears throat> except for dreamer. I'm definitely always going to be a dreamer. Um, and uh, you know, this, this movie was really inspiring. Um, and I really identify with these young people because I myself um, you know, came from Brazil when I was six years old um, to read out with my family here in the United States. Um, and I grew up 45 minutes outside of Boston in Brockton. Um, and growing up, even though um, I knew I was undocumented and I was always terrified um, of being deported, um, I was also very stubborn. And I didn't want to let my status get in, in my way. I was like, there's no way this status thing is going to get in my way. And um, as soon as I graduated high school, um, I took, up, took the money that I had saved up from four years of working at a Dungeons Donuts, cleaning houses, um, tutoring English, to one year at UMass Boston because that's what all I could afford. Um, and I, I didn't regret it at all. I put all my money in there. Um, and unfortunately, right before my second semester at UMass Boston, um, there was an immigration raid at my house. Um, my older brother was detained, um, and uh, my 15-year-old sister was interrogated, um, and they found my mom's passport, and they said that they would be back for the rest of us. And that's really when um, I realized that um, I couldn't sit around and wait anymore for something to change. Um, that I had to go find other people like myself. Um, and I was lucky enough to find a student immigrant movement and I found these amazing young um, undocumented people just like me who were sitting around in a room and they were not um, you know, just crying about their status but they were trying to figure out um, what they were gonna do about it. 
Um, and you know, I I was thrown right in, and pretty much within like two months, I was meeting with the governor, um, and I was you know lobbying for in-state tuition. I was all of a sudden thrown into the national movement, and all of a sudden, um, before I knew it, I was coming out as undocumented. It was my full name um, in front of the media and everyone, um, and it was a, it was a really scary thing, but it was also a really um, beautiful moment because that was the first time um, that I felt like I was a part of something bigger than myself. Um, and uh, eventually I ended up quitting my jobs um, and fundraising for SIM full time. And I would have four staff members who are undocumented people um, who are leading amazing um, things all over uh, Massachusetts. Um, you know, we had DACA application drives and now we're starting our Dare to Dream campaign. Trying to challenge institutions like MIT um, and like, uh, you know, uh, colleges all over Massachusetts to have more undocumented friendly policies. Um, and you know, uh, and I'm sure we're going to continue to do a lot of more um, amazing things. And I, I, you know, I don't want to give up until um, we have something better for everyone. Um, and DACA is a first step um, to something larger and more amazing um, for our community and our family and for everyone that we love. bureaucratically blended family of folks um, uh, who were undocumented. Um, my father um, for a long time and, uh, and folks like me who were naturalized. Um, and I've been involved um, in immigrant rights for a while, um, both of course in the most recent sort of punitive uh, government activity, uh, trying to sort of do everything possible, a lot of the uh, state legislations to disenfranchise um, and sort of to demonize and penalize and afflict um, undocumented students and undocumented communities. But uh, also, I, I, I'm one of those immigrants who maintain a strong relationship with their country back home. And so one of the things that uh, has become incredibly clear with this sort of global anti-immigrant wave doesn't simply um, exhibit or express itself in the United States. And I found myself doing work both in the United States, um, but also in the Dominican Republic, where there's an incredibly virulent anti-immigrant um, movement which has attempted to denationalize a large section of the Dominican community, um, which is an incredible, I mean, just an incredible uh, human rights violation uh, occurring not very 60 miles from the United States. And I think part of what goes on with this kind of work, of course, is we begin to discover uh, its transnational scope and how uh, certainly American policies uh, have their echoes in other local and nearby and allied states. And for those of us who are doing the work in San Domingo, there's no question that America sort of deranged, sort of just cruel, um, just ethos around its immigrant community has been picked up by other nations and other parties. And uh, finally, you know, the thing for me is it's been extraordinary being a part, being alive at this time, is that, you know, our, our youth have taken up with so much of our political and religious and academic leaderships have abdicated this sort of ethical and moral compass for our nation. It's been an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary thing to witness and to be a part of. I mean, literally, we live in a country where uh, we're basically told to be really, really scared and to try to make as much money as possible, and that is about the only two modalities that people should live in. 
and yet we have this group of young, undocumented um, activists and community workers who have really kind of provided an alternate model for not only how to be uh, a civic-minded person, how to be an American, but also simply how to live, and how to live ethically, and how to live in a way that, um, you know, a way that is very human and humane. And that has been incredibly inspiring. I mean, uh, I have to say it's been probably, been for as long as I've been, I'm 46 years old, it's been probably the most important thing that I've been able to witness in decades and decades. So, you know. So my name is Mary Mazio, and um, I made the film uh, with an incredibly talented team. Um, and before I talk about the kids, I just want to um, mention a couple of things. I am so indebted to MIT, Kim Vanderveer, Ed Moriarty, where are you? When we first started making this, they threw open the doors of MIT. Um, they knew we were talking about uh, undocumented students, and there was um, an incredible reception here at MIT. And the MIT students that we tracked down were amazing. They were nervous at first. They were concerned that they might be portrayed as arrogant. And of course, you guys are the MIT community. MIT is anything but, right? Um, we have an MIT alum, alum here who is frankly responsible for helping bring this to the big screen, John Carlson. Please raise your hand. But, but for John, uh, this would never have made it to the big screen. And, and I'll share in a little bit what's happened with the film, theatrically, and all kinds of things are happening. Um, but I have to say that to be up here with Sophia and Renata and Jose, my new friends at, at Dream It uh, and Sim, I am among our generation's civil rights leaders. And it is a privilege and an honor uh, to have been able to, <laughs> to have captured the story of people who are so brave so courageous and so uniquely American in every way. Um, and I'm humbled and thrilled to be here. Uh, I want to have a little bit of a conversation with the, the panel members. And I want to start with the film. Uh, whenever you uh, a piece of art, there is a 